I spent a long time searching for different Bamboo Lab H2D accessories and add-ons. There are a lot of options available. Most of the items in this video are 3D printable and some of them can be bought. I will also share my thoughts about them. The H2D came with this tools accessories box. It isn't very convenient to use, but there are many better options which you can 3D print. Some needs extra hardware. Some are printed in multi parts. Some are print in place. I printed some of them. This one is print in place design. The box lead features the Bamboo Lab logo along with the text H2D toolbox. The inches were quite stuck and I needed to use force to break them loose. I didn't want to break them so I applied little force at first. You can use the same plastic insert that it came with. The insert fits tightly and does not fall out even when the box is flipped. The lid also has locking latch. Lead latch could be weak point, considering the layer orientation and the part size. It could fail over time. I opened and closed it many times and it did not break. Also, you are using things inside the box every day, so it should last for a while. If you have printed this box, feel free to share your experience and let us know whether it has remained intact. Next one is mostly printed in place model, only the locking mechanism is printed separate. The hinges were not fused and began moving smoothly without any effort. It has also Pambo Lab logo and H2D written on the lead, similar to the other one. The locking system is simple, it consists of latch and spring. It's working fine. The box already has dedicated slots for the tools, so the insert that came with the tools is not needed. There are no slots for hot ends, so if you want to store hot ends in the same box, you can print a dedicated tray for them. The only downside to me is that you can't store hot ends with the silicone socks. By the way, I put this in the wrong way. Overall, it's good box. This one isn't a toolbox, it's made only for hot ends. It's printed in separate parts, but you don't need any hardware to assemble it. Parts are pressed in place. The locking works great. It holds up four hot ends with silicone socks installed, or they can be stored separately. The empty space around the hot end slots could be reduced to lower filament usage and decrease the overall box dimensions. When comparing these boxes, if you want to print less and use the provided the insert, print the first one. If you plan to buy more hot ends in the, in the future, you can print then the hot end box. If you have more hot ends or you are going to buy more, I will print the second one. If you want to store more and bigger things, then you can print that. It's called H2D series top drawers or EMSI drawers. It is drawer box with three different size drawers. You can put there your powder tubes and desiccant packs what came with the printer. Also toolbox inserts can be fit inside the drawer. As its name indicates, it is designed to be installed next to AMS. It comes with locking paste that prevent the drawer box from moving when opening the drawers. Locking paste itself is secured in place under the AMS. It sits on the glass lid, which can get quite warm, so PLA not be the best choice. I printed it in BTG. ABS will be even better. I think this is the option I will choose. It looks clean and nice, can hold many tools and accessories and save space. The H2D uses a USB connection for external storage, and longer USB drives can be easily hit. Here is the solution. This is the USB card. The bottom lip slides under the top lid, keeping it securely in place. It does its jobs well. It blocks small impact without issues. It also handles me medium impacts and even with large impacts it should help reduce the force bit before it breaks itself. If you are not using USB stick, the socket will collect dust. To prevent that, you can print a plug for it. There are many different options available. Here is one with 2D written on it, fits and looks ok. This one has more flatter design, I think it looks better than other, but it is harder to take off. 
This one is something between first and second one, it's not as flat as second one, but easier to remove like first one. If you use non-flexible filaments, the filament will be fed through both filament inlets. There is a separate inlet for TPU, most of the time it is unused, at, le at least in my case, so it remains an open hole. If you prefer it to be closed, you can print a plug for it. The loop makes it easy to remove. If I am at the back of the printer, I will show you some more things you can print and add to the back of the printer. The burst filament exits through the hole at the back, which can be quite messy if you don't have some kind of box to collect it. There are many different solutions available on Maker World. You just need to find one that suits you. I did choose this one. It's not blocking the vent holes, you don't need much filament to print it, and it has decent capacity. It's also easy to install and you don't need any hardware. It was the first add-on I did print for H2D and it's holding up great. If you want to use an external air purifier or direct air out of your printer using an air duct, you need a way to connect it. Here is one that can be mounted using 8 magnets. I will test the fit with 6. There seems to be screw holes as well. The back panel has no threaded holes, so you need to use self tapping screws. With magnets, installation is easy. You just need to make sure it's positioned correctly. Otherwise, you will damage the vent fins. Do not print it in PLA. Use a filament that can withstand higher temperatures, as the air can get quite warm. If you are wondering how far it stands out, it's about uh, 54mm and the outlet size is about 98mm, so 100mm vent hose should be fine. This one seems like a good choice to do its low profile design and magnetic mounting. If you are worried about the damage to the air vent fins and you don't use air reduct, then you can paint this cover. I am not too worried since it's facing the wall and the only time I put my hands there is when I empty the poop pin. I printed it because I like the hexagon design, although it's not visible most of the time. It supports several mounting options including round magnets, rectangular magnets or self tapping screws. No supports needed and also you don't need much filament to print it. When installing it keep in mind the side with the greater slope faces upwards. I printed it with ABS, PTG is fine also. It's not blocking the opening and closing of the automatic vent fins. The open slot placement of the desicant bags inside the EMS2 Pro isn't ideal, at least for me, and judging by the number of mods available, many other users seem to feel the same way. This is a desicant box, it fits in the same location where the desicant bags are meant to be placed. It has snap fit lead also. I printed it with ABS, if you want to use filament heating, you should use filaments that can handle the heat. It fits nicely. You can use desiccant bags or you can use rechargeable desiccant beads. I bought this container with indicators. Don't overfill it as I did, you can't close the lid. You can use it also as musical instrument. I think it looks much better than the original setup. You can also use these desiccant containers with double leads. You can use the same desiccant beads I used before. A smaller lead closes the container. It's made to fit inside the center hole of the bamboo lab spools. The second lead is for fixing it in place. Two lead system helps you easily and quickly transfer it to another spool. It can also be used an extra weight, which is handy when using spools with low filament. Before we jump back into the prints, I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Most people know them for their professional PCB prototyping and assembly, but they also offer a wide range of manufacturing services like CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding and even 3D printing. So if you want to bring your design to life, whether it's an electronics, custom enclosure, or parts you can't easily print at home, PCBWA is a great option. The build plate that, came, the build plate that comes with h 2 is not bad at all, but there are even better ones out there. PQ Cryo Grip Pro Frostbite build plate. This one has rough texture finish. 
and another one is with the fine textures. These plates provide excellent adhesion even at low temperatures. I have been using the same plates on my X1 for a long time and they have performed very well. You can touch them and without cleaning them you still have good adhesion. If you have fingerprints on the original plate you lose adhesion. So less maintenance, less bad temperature and better adhesion. If you have a problem with the bad adhesion you could try these build plates. If you got extra build plates you will also need to store them somewhere. You can find many build plate holders for Maker World. I printed this 2 plate one which is very small size comparing the build plates. It can't stand up by itself. It's meant to be slided under the H2D and then it's not flipping over. The pros are that you don't need much filament to print it and it doesn't take up much space on the desk. One downside is that the blades either sit against the printer or when positioned the other way sticks out quite a bit. I did print another one, what I like much more. It can hold up to three blades, printing it triggers more filament than the other option, but it's more stable and can be used anywhere. It can be placed next to the printer and it isn't taking too much test space either. Next one is maybe not so usual, but still quite nice mod. It's a cover for LEDs to status bar. There are different options. I printed the percentage cover, it snaps on. It helps you to see the print progress, with each cap equals to 10%. I think it's quite clever design. Some users have complained that the door handle is not convenient to grab from the both directions. I don't see a problem with it and it doesn't bother me. However, if it bothers you, there is a handle attachment that uh, should help. It seems to be ok and it can be grabbed both sides. It snaps on the original handle, so it's easy to install and also easy to remove. It feels solid and appears to remain firmly in place. If you want to print flexible filaments, you need to remove the bottom tube. One option is to place the tube end into the slot. It's maybe not the best option, but you can print a tube holder. It's a simple holder that can be pushed into place. It performs as intended, so there's nothing more to add. To print more flexible filaments softer than 95A, it's recommended to use top mounted spool holder. I have used it uh, when I did printed shoes and I showed it in the video. It has great design and it worked great. Printing shoes took me almost 100 hours and after I took it off the printer, I noticed that one spring was broken. I did print it with PLA, I think PTG would be better to print the springs, but still it's very useful and quick to add on. The next thing is a screen protector, where the frame snaps onto the screen and the lead attaches to the frame. Fits nicely and looks clean. I think it does its job, so there's not much to add. If you feel your H2D needs protection, it's a good thing to use. Printers need maintenance. Here is one tool that can help make it easier. The basic thing to do is greasing the lead screws. It's Swin's style tool. It comes with a tool that helps to fill the grease gun. There is also a cap. Uh, the tip is special shape to match lead screws. I filled it with some grease, added some grease between the parts. It works and doesn't leak from the back, which is good, but it isn't very smooth because of the layer lines. Spawner layer height will help and also maybe some sanding can make it smoother. I think if you have grease tube, it's better to print special nozzle for it, and if you have grease container, it can be handy. And the last one is hot ends with different size nozzles. The H2D comes with 0.4mm nozzles. They are the most no common used size, but having other sizes available would be nice. 0.2mm nozzle benefits are much finer detail, better surface quality on small parts, thin walls and dedicated structures and more accurate dimensions on small features. Larger nozzles reduce print time, they are also recommended when printing flexible filaments. With thicker extrusion lines, bars often have better layer bonding and higher overall strength. 
which is usual for functional prints. Large nozzles are less likely to clog when printing filaments filled with carbon fiber, glass fiber, wood or metal particles. There are many add-ons available online and there are only a small part of them. There are many variations of add-ons upgrades available so you can choose what suits you best. So let's end the video here. If any add-ons or upgrades seem interesting, I had added the links in the description. Feel free to comment below and share your thoughts. Thanks for watching.